Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Bear Leak Project, how the heck are you? This is a amazing find from 1912. It's called Cuneiform Parallels to the Old Testament by Robert Rogers. And wow, amazing. So in my quest to debunk Nibiru and thinking that Nibiru is a total hoax, and we know that the lens flare pictures are, but the actual planet itself, I've heard everything from it is Jupiter, it could be Saturn, it could be Venus, it could be a binary star with seven planets behind it, it could be a giant spaceship, it could be nothing but a fragment of imaginations. Well, over a hundred years ago, translations were done that specifically say Nibiru destroyed Tiamat. And if you look at it astrotheologically, it was definitely a planet. And I'm going to share this with you real quick. I'd like to let you know this podcast is brought to you in part by Noble Gold Investments. Even the Anunnaki knew about the opportunity of gold, precious metals. It's easier than you think to convert your 401 or your IRA into precious metals. Super easy. If you're concerned about the markets right now, you want to hedge against inflation, click the links, get the free books, if anything. They're giving out free books to Leak Project listeners, how inflation is used against you to keep you in the rat race. Do you want to get out? Check it out. Noble Gold Investments. All right, now let's go back to the podcast. Cuneiform parallels to the Old Testament. I'm going to go to page 42. Page 42. Right here. Go to page 42. What do we have here? Cuneiform parallels. In the midst of Tiamat, the battle. This is when Marduk is appointed to battle against Tiamat because Ea, Enki, and the Anunnaki Council decide it's what needed to be done. So Marduk destroys Tiamat. And let me share this with you, this translation that was done in 1912, 106 years ago. Not by Zachariah Sitchin. You know, Zachariah Sitchin might be right. And he might not be. All right, so here we go. <laughs> it's for you to decide. The star which shineth in the heavens, he who taketh the beginning and the future, may they look unto him. Saying, he who passed through the mist of Tiamat without resting, let his name be Nibiru. Not Nibiru, not Nibiru, no, Nibiru. Let his name be Nibiru, who seizes the midst. He upheld the paths for the stars of heaven like a flock. All the gods together do pasture. He conquered Tiamat. He troubled and ended her life and the future of mankind. In the aged days, sing without ceasing. Let him rule forever since he created the heaven and made the earth the Lord of the world Has father, Bel, called his name. The names which all the Ajiji did name. Ea heard his heart, was rejoiced. Ea heard and his heart was rejoiced. He whose name his father. His fathers have magnified. Let's zoom in on this. Shell. Be even as I, his name shall be Ea. The whole of my orders shall he control. The whole of my commands shall he pronounce. By the name of 50 did the great gods make known his 50 names. They made his path lofty. Let them be held in remembrance. And when learned, let one make them known. I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. The wise and the understanding shall consider them. 
together. The father shall repeat them and teach them to his son. They shall be in the ears of the shepherd and the sheep driver. Let man rejoice in Marduk, the Lord of the gods, that he may make his land fertile and that he may have prosperity. His word is established. His command is unchangeable. The word of his mouth, no God, hath annualed. When he looketh in anger, he turns not his neck when he is wroth. No God can face his indignation. White is his heart, broad is his compassion. The sinner and the evildoer in his presence, they received instruction they spoke before him unto of Marduk, may the gods. So now I'm going to type in Anunnaki. Check this out. And what do we have here? Let's move this over a little bit. No, it's fine. So Anuuki for Anunnaki. Proceedings of the Society of Biblical Archaeology from March 1889. The story of creation. Now, there's so many different creation stories. And if you read through the creation tablets, the Enuma Elish, by the time you get to tablet 7, Marduk is the god. He's the one that saves the Anunnaki, destroys Tiamat, now, I am thinking of the electric universe phenomena. I am thinking of the possibility of a lot of, their, a lot of truth to, at one point, people didn't see the stars. There was a purple veil over the world. It was a Garden of Eden. No night, no day. I guess it's kind of always day, but it's not in this term we look at now as day. And then when a planet came in, it ripped the veil, this protective veil, and now you see these stars and these planets. And in, in, in the next podcast, I'm going to talk about the Anunnaki and how these creation stories specifically say the Anunnaki, Anu, Ia, Enki, which is Enki, I think Enlil also, and several others on this council created the new moon. Are they talking about the moon that we're seeing now? And does that have something to do with the electric universe? It's just fascinating to, to put these dots together. Now, also, there's so many different references of the Anunnaki. So like, let's go to page 70 here. Page 12, you can see that. Now, page 70. The prudent, the most wise among the Anunnaki was he. Now, if you scroll above this, Tablet number one, he possessed intelligence. His command, like the command of Anu, he, Ia, granted him a wide ear to reveal his destiny of the land. He granted him wisdom, but he did not grant him eternal life. In those days, in those years, the wise man of Eridu, Ia had created him as chief among men, a wise man whose command none should oppose. Now, didn't Gilgamesh want eternal life? The prudent, the most wise among the Anunnaki was he, blameless of clean hands, anointed observer of the divine statues. With the bakers he made bread. With the bakers of Eridu he made bread. The food and the water for Eridu he made daily. With his clean hands he prepared the table. And without him the table was not cleared. Nanu, nanu, nanu. The ship he steered, fishing and hunting. For Eridu, he did. Then, Adapa of Eridu, while Ea, in the chamber upon the bed, daily, the closing of Eridu, he attended to. Upon the pure dam, the new moon dam, he embarked upon the ship. The, moon, the new moon dam. Interesting. The wind blew, and his ship departed. With the oar, he steered his ship upon the broad sea. Page 95. The Babylonian flood story. While Nebo and Sheru, Marduk, went before, they go as messengers over mountain and valley. Nergal tore away the foundations. Nineb advances the storm he makes to descend. The Anunnaki lifted up their torches. 
With their brightness, they light up the land. A dodge storm reached unto heaven. All light was turned into darkness. It flooded the land like one day the deluge. Raged high, the waters covered the mountains like a besom of destruction. They brought it upon men. No man beheld this fellow. No more were men recognized in heaven. The gods feared the deluge. They drew back. They climbed up to the heaven of Anu. That would be Uranus because the heaven of Anu is Uranus. Uh, Anu is the king of Uranus. So the heaven of Anu, that would be Uranus. So they flew back to Uranus, folks. The gods crouched like a dog. They covered by the walls, or they cowered by the walls. Wow. Ishtar cried like a woman in travail. Wow. Loudly cried the queen of the gods with her beautiful voice. The former time has turned into clay. Since I command evil in the assembly of the gods, because I command evil in the assembly of the gods, for the destruction of my people, I commanded battle. I alone bore my people. And now, like the spawn of fish, they fill the sea. The gods of the Anunnaki wept with her. The gods sat bowed and weeping. Covered were their lips six days and six nights. Blew the wind, the deluge, and the tempest overwhelmed the land. When the seventh day drew high, the tempest spent itself in the battle, which it had fought like an army. Then rest of the sea, the storm fell asleep, the flood ceased. I looked upon the sea, there was silence come, and all mankind was turned to clay. Now, there's several Sumerian king lists. You can pull up a half dozen of them at least. And I'm getting conflicting reports because many of them show that the first five kings ruled for 200 and it was like 241,200 years or something like that. There's another list that shows eight kings ruled before the major flood for almost 350,000 years. But I can't find the specific kings to make up that gap. So most of them are showing about 220,000 years. The kingship ruled. There was five kings that ruled for approximately that amount of time. Then there was a great flood. Then the rulership was given again by the gods, by the Anunnaki. Then there was a flood again. There's been multiple floods, multiple catastrophes. These Anunnaki know these systems, know these cycles, and if they create, it also talks about how they created the new moon. If they created the moon that we're looking at and that caught, that and put it into that spot, that would cause an extreme cataclysm, flooding, events. China's launching a moon into low orbit so they can offset the pollution and they don't have to put up as many street lights, so they say. I think it could also be used as a directed weapon just because they can specifically target areas within a few meters with enormous lighting capabilities. Like <laughs> and then also last night, we talked about another fascinating synchronicity. I'm watching Colonization, I think it's called. It's a series. And they're, they're up to the th season three, I think. And I'm, I just finished watching season one. One of the main characters, she is a major aristocrat on Earth. I think she's representing Ishtar because they keep showing the jewelry that she has with the eight-pointed star, like Ishtar. Although Ishtar is connected to Venus, so... I'm interested in the connection of Ishtar being the mother of Earth as well. There's got to be some connections there. The Babylonian flood story. Like a roof, the plain lay level. I opened the window and the light fell upon my face. I bowed, I sat down, I wept, and over my face ran my tears. I looked in all directions. Terrible was the sea. After 12 days, an island arose to the land of Nisr. The ship made its way. The mount of Nisr held it fast that it moved not. One day, a second day, did the mount of Nisr hold it, that it moved not. A third day, a fourth day, did the mount of Nisr hold it, that it moved not. A fifth day, a sixth day, did the mount of Nisr hold it, that it moved not. When the seventh day approached, I sent forth a dove and let her go. 
The dove flew away and came back, for there was no resting place, and she returned. I sent forth a swallow and let her go. The swallow flew away and came back, for there was no resting place, and she returned. I sent forth a raven and let her go. This is very similar to the flood story in the Old Testament. These cuneiform parallels are fascinating, and it completely shatters, in my opinion, the Old Testament stories as being the originals. Even the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's a combination of astrotheology, politics, history, clandestine information, only available for the initiated or those that initiate themselves by finding it themselves. This information has been passed down for tens of thousands of years. So the raven flew away. She saw the abatement of the water. She drew near, she waited, she croaked and came not back. Then I sent everything forth to the four quarters of heaven. I offered sacrifice. I made a libation upon the mountain's peak. By sevens, I set out the sacrificial vessels. Beneath them, I heaped up reed and cedar wood and myrtle. The gods smelt the savor. The gods smelt the sweet savor. The gods gathered like flies over the sacrificer when at last the lady of the gods drew near. Wow. Column six, or I'm sorry, column four. She raised the great jewel, which Anu, according to her, wish had made. O ye gods, here even as I shall not forget the jewel on my neck, the jewels of my neck. Nanny, nanny. Upon these days shall I think I shall never forget them. Let the gods come to the offering. But let Elil not come to the offering, for he took not counsel and sent the deluge. And my people he gave to destruction. When at last Elil drew near, he saw the ship, then was Elil wroth. He was filled with anger against the gods, the Ajiji, who then has escaped with life. No man must live in the destruction. Then Nanib opened his mouth and spake. He said to the warrior Elil, Who but Ea can plan aught? And Ea knoweth every matter. Ea opened his mouth and spake. He spake to the warrior Elil, Thou wise among the gods, warrior Elil, why couldst thou without thought send a flood? On the sinner lay his sin. On the slanderer lay his slander. Forbear, let not all be destroyed. Have mercy that men be not destroyed. Interesting, because the Old Testament has this story in there, but it has a completely different spin on it. Isn't that fascinating? Which one do you want to believe? That's up to you. I'm just bringing the information, and it's for you to decide. It doesn't matter what I think anyway. It's fascinating. I will tell you that. It is absolutely fascinating. This is so incredible to find this old information, compile it, connect it, and then it's like a aha moment. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Instead of thy sending a deluge, had a lion come and mankind lessened, Instead of thy sending a deluge, had a wolf come and mankind lessened. Instead of thy sending a deluge, had a famine come and the land. Instead of thy sending a deluge, had Ura come and mankind slain. I have not divulged the decision of the great gods. I made Atrahasis see a dream, and so he discovered the secret of the gods. Now take counsel for him. Ea went up into the ship. He took my hand and brought me forth. He brought forth my wife and made her kneel at my side. He turned us toward each other. He stood between us and blessed us. Formerly, Ut Napishtim was only a man, but now let Ut Napishtim and his wife be like the gods, even us. Wow. Let Ut Napishtim dwell after 
dwell afar off at the mouth of the rivers. They took me and afar off at the mouth of the rivers. They made me to dwell. With these words, the long story of the deluge is ended and Ut Napishtim takes thought for his earthly visitor and says, who of the gods will now gather thee to himself that thou mayest find the life thou seekest? Come, lie not down to sleep six days and seven nights. Now, page 96, the Anunnaki again. I think this must be Ishtar again. Ishtar cried like a woman in travail. Loudly cried the queen of the gods with her beautiful voice. The former time is turned into clay since I commanded evil in the assembly of the gods because I commanded evil in the assembly of the gods for the destruction of my people. I commanded battle. I alone bore my people and now like the spawn of fish, they fill the sea. The gods of the Anunnaki wept with her. The gods sat bowed and weeping covered were their lips six days and six nights. Blew the wind, the deluge, and the tempest. <coughs> Overwhelmed the land. When the seventh day drew nigh, the tempest spent itself in the battle, which it had fought like an army. Then rested the sea, the storm fell asleep, the flood ceased. I looked upon the sea, there was silence come, and all mankind was turned to clay. Page 128. To Namtar, this is Ishtar's descent to Hades. Or, I mean, very similar to Inanna's descent to the netherworld. To Namtar, her message, see addressed the word. Go, Namtar, knock at the palace of justice. Knock at the thresholds of gleaming jewels. Bring forth the Anunnaki. Let them be seated upon the golden throne. Sprinkle Ishtar with the water of life and bring her before me. Namtar went and knocked at the palace of justice. He knocked at the thresholds of gleaming jewels. He brought forth the Anunnaki. He seated them upon the golden throne. He sprinkled Ishtar with the water of life and brought her forth. So now if you read through this, it'll talk about the seven layers of clothing that she gets back. It's very similar to the seven layers that she loses in Inanna's Descent to the Netherworld. Page 146. The Anunnaki. May they say to thee, O Lord, be appeased. King of kings, exalted, whose decrees none rival, no God is like unto thy divinity, where thine eye does glance. Faithfully there cometh harmony. Where thou dost grasp the hand, there cometh salvation. Gleaming, Lord, who dost guide and lead truth and righteousness in heaven and upon earth. Look upon thy temple, look upon thy city, look upon earth, look upon Egish Hiragal. May the dear wife Ningal, the gracious mother, may she say to thee, O Lord, be appeased. The hero Shamash, thy son, may he say to thee, O Lord, be appeased. The Ajiji, may they say to thee, O Lord, be appeased. The Anunnaki, may they say to thee, O Lord. Be appeased. Page 178. He who fears the Anunnaki will lengthen his days. In thy wisdom, read from the tablet, the fear of God begetteth favor, offering enriches life, and prayer brings forgiveness of sins. He who fears the gods will not cry to them in vain. He who fears the Anunnaki will lengthen his days with friend and companion, thou shalt not speak evil. Thou shalt not speak anything base, but good shall, shalt thou speak. If thou hast promised aught, give it to him. If thou hast encouraged him, leave him not afterwards at loss. Now, I think this is also talking about when Marduk. Oh, this is Enlil. Column one. Let's 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 take a look at this. Akutaru of Boundary Stone. 
the name of the stone, Ninib and Nusku established the boundary is its name. So it's talking about areas that are getting connected here. It looks like a land grant or something. I don't know. But column one, Elil, which is Enlil, the exalted Lord, ruler of heaven and earth, prince, Lord of all, king of the great gods, who in heaven and earth has not his equal upon the giving of whose command the Ajiji prostrate themselves upon their faces, do homage reverently, and to his decision the Anunnaki wait submissively, stand humbly, the Lord of Lords, the word of whose mouth no God can annual or annual. The ruler of the Anunnaki, the Lord of the black headed people, dominator of lands, ruler of kingdoms, the God whose splendor is overwhelming and full of brilliance, with whose glory the whole extent of heaven, all habitants, habitations, and all dwellings are clothed, with whose majesty the lands are covered, whose rule is beyond compare, whose divinity cannot be equaled, whose decision is weighty, whose command is exalted, whose law is first, whose ways are wonderful, whose rules heaven and earth, who sustain the lands, who calls the faithful shepherd, who appoints the governor of earth forever with the light of his gracious countenance, with his shining face upon Nebuchadnezzar, the prince, his favorite, who is devoted to his sanctuaries. He looked faithfully, and that he might shepherd Shummer and Akkad, that he might restore the sanctuaries of the city of dwellings and regulate the tithers, <laughs> tithers. and regulate the tithes of Ikur and Nippur, the weapon of the enemy, of his enemy, he broke, and the scepter of his enemy he placed in his hand. A life of eternal days he granted him, and above any king that went before him, he magnified his name. Because of the regulations of the tithes of Ikur, because of the magnificent sacrifices, because of the rich gifts and the treasures before Enlil, or before Elil, because of the prostrations before the Lord of the Son of the Lord, with which to Elil and Ninib, he paid reverent homage. Because of the utterance of supplications because of the word of the king, the priest. Nusku, Ibni, son of Upakapahur. Nusku, priest of Elil, the of Nusku, the chief of Daronki. To the king, the faithful shepherd, the prince, the favorite of Elil. Because of his supplication, he looked faithfully and I'm going to leave it at that because a lot of these names are, I'm just going to mess them up possibly. But it's interesting because you read through this and these battles of these gods. And I can definitely see a um, rivalry between Enlil, Enki, and Enki. Because I just read them to you. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a few of many, but this is found throughout history and stories and Hollywood even. You watch the Avengers films, Thor and Loki. And it's interesting because when you put these gods in one book, one or not one book, a compilation of books, but one canon, and you have these gods translated to be a monotheistic god, no wonder you get conflicts of interest here because you're taking these gods, plural, and you're attempting to merge everything into a singularity when it's not. It's a duality in every sense of the form. So thank you for watching. I'd like to get your take on this and in the comments section. You can also go directly to thearchive.org and I'll leave the link in the video description box. Cuneiform parallels to the Old Testament. Cuneiform parallels to the Old Testament. Let's go back to the 
beginning here. So this is right here. This is it. Isn't it amazing how there's so many people out there that will knock on Zachariah Sitchin or Nibiru or the Anunnaki and say that everything was made up by Zachariah Sitchin and, and Zachariah Sitchin was this and that. And yet reality, what he said, you can find in other platforms, books that were available before he was even born. I mean, I found stuff from the 1800s that was translated that said Anunnaki. Enlil, Enki, Anu, Anana, Marduk, Nibiru. It's amazing how for so many years, there's been people out there that have just done everything they can to smear those names and say it's all a byproduct of, of one person and it's all just made up. And the more research I do in attempting to, well, to get to the truth, but I was going into this thinking that you know, Nibiru's false, Anunnaki, maybe a creation, you know, kind of made up. Didn't really know about the Anunnaki when I very first started doing the research. I found them fascinating, but I didn't know anything as nearly as much as I do now. But Nibiru, I, when I first started to research it, I felt, or before I even started to really research it, I felt that it was a made up um, PSYOP, wag the dog special scenario. And I think now most people feel that way just because of all the lens flare doom that has been projected for years. You know, I mean, and then you can go back to the time when that, I'm not going to say names here, but the one lady had her dog put down because she thought that gray aliens were telling her that Nibiru was coming. How sad is that? Pretty spooky. So... If Nibiru is still out there, where is it? What is it now? I mean, if you go to the cataclysm where Nibiru smashed into Tiamat, and now you've got remains of the asteroid belt and Earth. Well, what did it do to Nibiru? <laughs> I mean, well, it, certainly, I doubt it got away unscattered. Would have had to have had an effect on Nibiru as well. So where is it? And, and have they renamed it now? I mean, does it have, once they find it again, they'll be like, oh yeah, it's, uh, it's the 2018 CX294212-ank-ank. So people are like, oh, that's not Nibiru, it's the 2018 C4-ank-ank. Or something like that. Gotta look it up again. I don't know. So, conspiracy folks, thank you for watching. Swamp Gas, be excellent to each other. Support our sponsors, support yourself. Check out those specials right now with Noble Gold Investments. You'll be glad you did. And even there's these great, if you don't want to like move your stocks or if you don't have stocks but you want to get into gold or you want to get into silver, there's a really cool special right now also, trumpcoin2020.com. Use the code LEAKPROJECT. You'll get yourself a limited edition silver Trump coin. And did I say it's limited? Oh, yeah. And I say it's silver? It is. And is it controversial? Yep. Are you a collector? There you go. Be the change you want to see. <laughs>